Hey guys, this is K2's Retro Workshop. Today we're going to be revisiting the Cyrix DRX266. Last time we did it, we used this motherboard, and there were some problems associated with it. The Cyrix kept freezing up. It would boot just fine, but it kept freezing up. And I'll give a link to the video below um, if you're interested in more info on that. What I've gone ahead and done here is I've picked up another motherboard that is almost identical to this one that we tried before, but it doesn't have the processor installed in it. This motherboard with this processor seems to run fine. I've had no trouble with it. Um, I've run it for days, you know, running it in, making sure that this processor is in good shape and everything, and it seems to do just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some VGA captures that I've got of it, and we'll... Uh, talk about what problems we could have had and stuff like that while we watch the comparison. All right, so I'm going to continue in the future doing these side-by-side -side video comparisons. I really like being able to get a feel for how the different computers behave right next to each other doing the same thing. Uh, as you can see, neither one of these are really having a problem with this 3D bench, but the DRX266 is noticeably faster um it should be noted there's about a 21 percent bus bandwidth decrease with this processor swap the front side bus has to run at 33 megahertz with the 486 versus 40 megahertz with the 386 and despite that we still get a 33 percent increase in this benchmark next up we have pc player bench we get a 41 percent increase in this one and that matches pretty closely with the clock speed of the processor. Uh, we got a 40% increase in clock to, of 26 megahertz with the clock doubled 486 in there. There's a few other things that are in there also. We've got a reduction in clock cycles per operation. So the 486 is more efficient and it has an easier time doing the same tasks that the 386 did. Plus, you have the addition of internal cache and a few other optimizations. It really doesn't appear like the drop in bus speed really affects the processor much. I can only imagine that that's because the amount of waiting that the system does for the processor to actually finish a task is our bottleneck here. Um, I don't have one of those IBM 486 Blue processor chips to throw in one of these boards but uh maybe one day i'll get one of those in there and we can make a comparison even with the drx2 now this benchmark takes forever so we'll go ahead while this is running and go over the different things that could potentially be the problem with that other motherboard uh, there were a few comments in the last video that talked about how the power situation might be an issue and there's some merit to that the 386 while it's in high impedance mode when you when you activate the float pin it doesn't actually take the processor offline so the internal clocks and stuff like that are all running the processor still gets physically warm while it's in there so it's possible that that motherboard is just not designed to have two chips running at once and the dlc 40 in it doesn't drag it down enough to cause a problem, but the DRX266 does. Very possible there. I haven't tried running the DRX266 not in clock doubled mode. The Cyrix defaults to it, while the Texas Instruments version defaults to 1x mode. So I haven't tried that yet, but I, I don't know that it really matters because I have this other motherboard. It's got the same model number. Same revision number, same everything, except for the sauce processor being installed in there, and it works just fine. So, I think that that's going to be where that processor stays, and I'm just not going to worry about it. Now, this isn't the highest performance I can eke out of either of these processors. The Sang 4000 ISA card does get me um, a little bit of a performance increase. It's something like 10-15%. But I had already started doing all these benchmarks and comparisons with the Trident, so I went ahead and stuck with that. Plus, I'm going to be less sad if I accidentally kill the Trident while I'm moving cards around and stuff than if I 
kill the good ISA card. I'm going to try to save that for when I'm actually putting a machine together. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I have cycled this processor on this motherboard for a couple of days. Uh, 3D Bench and PC Player Bench both tend to just loop over and over again when they're done. And it spent one day doing 3D Bench and another day doing PC Player Bench. It had no problems, no freezing. I did get a maximum temperature of like 150 Fahrenheit, just like in the previous video, but it didn't seem to care. And uh, I mean, it's a little hot. You might put a heat sink or something on it, but. Now, this is just a benchmark comparison between the two things. There's a lot of games that'll play really well on this system. Uh, Doom just happens to be one of those that's easy to compare because I can play just the time demo and everything is perfectly repeatable. Uh, Phil from Phil's Computer Lab did a great video on a 386 retro gaming PC setup, and he has quite the compilation of games on there. Uh, things like Wing Commander play a little too fast on either of these machines, but um, games like Wolfenstein... Wolfenstein plays great on these. And so if you want to know what kind of games you can play on a system like this, at least on the 386DX40, uh, take a look over at his channel. I'll leave a link below for it. And this benchmark is way long. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. If you guys have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them in the box below. Don't forget to subscribe. And um, yeah, have a nice day. Thank you.